I'm Diego Cordovez. Welcome to The Scoop, brought to you by Phil Till Poker. Adam Schoenfeld's traveling abroad, but we have a special guest today, Darwin Moon, who is a runner-up in the main event of the World Series of Poker. Came out of nowhere and almost won the biggest tournament of the year. Played very colorfully, very aggressively, and is an interesting guy, so it should be good. So leading up to the final table, the main event, people had the impression that you were playing very solidly and you had a succession of big hands and that you were going to be a rock, you had a lot of chips. Then at the final table we saw you making some really aggressive plays and some big bluffs. So was it a case where you tried to take advantage of your image and changed up your game or you've been playing that way the whole time but no one had caught on? Or, I played or that way you? the whole time. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, I was only at the tables with the cameras and the last two days and a little while an earlier day. Right. So until then, people didn't realize that you were making no. a lot of moves on. No. I mean, I was showing all big hands. And a lot of hands I didn't show because it was a 2-3 offsuit or, yeah, I mean, it was, you know. And you caught some big hands too, which is, a, which is necessary. Right. But those were the ones people saw and remembered. Yeah. And other times you were using your, your chip stack. Yeah. Because yeah. you had a lot of chips all the way, all the way through. From day one, I had to chip lead my table day one. Day three, there was another guy that had me out chip. But other than that, every day I had to lead at my table. I mean, people have read about how you won a uh, satellite to get in, yeah. and, and um, you hadn't played in big live tournaments before, certainly not the World Series. Typically, people expect you're going to show up, you're going to be pretty conservative, you're going to try to draw it out to some extent. So was your attitude when you showed up on day one, I'm going to play my game and whatever happens, happens? I had, a, I had strategies for every day wrote down, mm -hmm. and I followed it. The only thing I thought we only had to play seven days in July. Right. So day eight, I was lost. I, yeah, <laughs> you I didn't just, have a plan for no. that one. But I mean, I, and this here, I, I wrote down the strategies for this, but I had to change up against this gentleman I just played because you couldn't right. bet him off enough unless I went all in. Right, we're playing the heads up championship now. Yeah. So every day, literally, you wrote down a plan or a strategy for yeah, that before, day. Before the, yeah, I had it wrote down before I came to Vegas. That was, and at the World Series, that was based on the table dynamics and chips you had, or what yeah. would you use to the, figure out what you to... start with? Thirty thousand chips. The blinds start twenty-five and fifty-two hour increment. I mean, I had oh, my goal was make the money, right? And when I got there, that things just kept rolling and rolling. And <laughs> yeah, all the showman. way. Yeah, all I had, the way to second. Right, I had <laughs> showman at my table three days before we got to the final table. And he's he, a troublemaker. He's the only person I couldn't figure out. He was, I just stayed away from him. He got in the pot, I folded. I mean, it was, I mean, not, probably vice versa to some extent too. You had a lot of uh, chips and Yeah, you stayed probably out of your way. so. I mean, it's, um, but yeah, I mean, he just played. Um, he was, he was one of them that stayed away. I usually, somebody at each table, I couldn't figure out. Um, I just avoided them. I mean, you, uh, Finishing second obviously is a huge accomplishment that almost anyone would trade trade for. Uh, now that you've watched the final table on TV, you've seen a lot of the hands and thought them through. Do you have any regrets over over the final table or, or the heads up? Or no, I would never regret anything. Um, everything right down to heads up, I wanted to do. I wanted to endorse this. Um, I wanted to. I wanted to. Uh, double up one of the short stacks early to make him think I was playing loose. Right. Unfortunately, I double up Saud, and he was the most solid player at the table at the, right. the that whole day. That was a critical hand at the time. You tried a very ambitious bluff where you bet yeah. and re-raised, and he had two pair already, yeah. so you were drawing yeah. very slim. Yeah, and, and he, he used his chips pretty effectively after that. Yeah, What's he it? raised pre-flop with a jack deuce. deuce. Yeah. So I thought, and he's on the button. He could have yeah, anything. Yeah, right. And um, yeah, it just he outplayed me. I mean, it, but I wanted to double up. But I, I thought I still had a chance. But man, I didn't have. I mean, he had me. Right. I think I could have hit a five on the river or something to hit a straight. You picked on up a, a, a gut inside shot. straight draw. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But on the flop, you were. Yeah, I was. No yeah, pair to oh, two pair. My, I was, yeah, yeah, I was in bad shape. There was an interesting hand where you tried uh, a big bluff on Steve Beglider. And you laid down. What was interesting about it, I thought, was two things. First, you committed a lot of your chips, 
and then you got away from it, which is a very strong play to at least save the remainder once the yeah, first puck didn't work. Six more On TV, you walked over to your uh, to your family and you told them that you had a different hang. So was that part of the psychology of knowing the cameras were on or that that yeah, information was, might um, leak over? Because when I saw that, I thought I'd never seen anything like that where you told your wife you had a different hand than what you, you had. Well, I had, I was mic'd and I felt that somebody in the back might be able to send a message to their coach or um, Mike Mattisau was sitting right behind my family at the time. I don't know if he's sending messages down of what I'm telling Probably, my half. Sure. So, but my wife knew I was going to do it. I mean, we done discussed. I'm not. I'm going to come over and not tell what I had. I love the fact that I mean, you're really taking it to another level because when you're doing that, I mean, this is stuff beyond just the game at the table. I mean, it's yeah. it's sending yeah. this information, and I think in the atmosphere there at the final table, it's very likely that that information circulates around. I know on the first break people were talking about what hand Phil Ivey had when Joe Cotta laid down against them, and now people know. So yeah. so your wife knew you'd be playing some games. Yeah, so yeah. They, the um, ESPN didn't take it very well. They said that I tried to start a controversy in, in poker because I said that I felt that I, what I told come back out online, which I know it did because I had a guy there that had a Blackberry and I told my family the truth a little while earlier right. and then uh, about 10 minutes it's out on the Blackberry. Of it's course. Out, yeah. At this stage of the internet yeah. that's yeah. But, being yeah, Twittered yeah. or being yeah, uh, you get, you put know, out right away. Yeah. yeah so. Now, are you, uh, you're playing here in the Heads Up Championship, it's a lot of yeah. fun. Is it your intention now to be more active, playing more tournaments, more visible? Because it seemed like, uh, of course, you come back to the World Series, but yeah. that you were you were pretty satisfied with uh, what you're doing in your life, and yeah. that it wasn't your goal to all of a sudden be a highly visible poker player. Right. Has that changed, or no. how's that? No, I'm still not going to be out a lot. I want to do some fun tournaments. I mean, now I can do it. Um, mm -hmm. I, got, I would think so. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I think this is fun. They invited me to it. I thought this would be yeah, very I mean, fun to play. That's heads the up. fifth time I've played heads up, and the first time I've played heads up since since Jokeda. So right. um, this is. It's either the fifth or sixth time I've played heads up in my life, and, and this here will help me. So this you're year not. For, you're not going to be on the tournament circuit playing a lot of uh, no, smaller events. No, no, I don't want to. Um, We'll, we'll see what comes. I mean, I'm going to play some. I'd like to play a few of the WPTs. Um, but how, just, is, how has it changed just your life as far as getting recognized in public or having people uh, sometimes coming out of the woodwork who you hadn't talked to in a while? I mean, I haven't talked to you about this, but you were very visible. In addition to finishing second in the biggest event of the year, all throughout you were a big story. And, yeah. and during the break before November, there was a lot written about you because you had the best story yeah. uh, compared to guys who were just regular pros playing with us. Yeah. Is it what you expected or what, what has been kind of a surprise to you? Since it's about a hundred times bigger than I ever imagined. I mean, it's nobody can even imagine what, what I've experienced unless they've experienced them themselves. And I don't know that anybody has come from an area where I have and end up where I'm at right now. Right, um, from a more rural yeah, area. Yeah, from, um, like I said, the Rio has more rooms in it than our town, the little town, has population. I mean, it's just unreal. It's, what was the reaction when you got back, back home? Oh, it was, it was like, I mean, everybody was really happy. and it was, it was, But it's been positive for you, it has Oh, done yes, that. yeah, everything. I mean, it's it's made my, my wife's life so much easier. Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, I can pick and choose what I do now. Mm -hmm. I don't have to work in the rain. And oh yeah. Well, no. There's no doubt that it's overwhelmingly positive in terms of yeah. changing your life. Just as far as I would imagine that, because of the image that you develop, people in the public are really uh, supportive of you, yeah. and you know they have a positive reaction when they when yeah. they see you or meet you. Yeah. It's um, yeah. It's it's been good. It's been um, very positive everywhere. Um, I don't know how to explain it. One thing that was interesting was that for most poker players these days, uh, their big ambition is to be sponsored. If you're playing a lot of tournaments and traveling around, 
that's like obviously a big cushion to have. And as soon as you made the final table, even before that, you were pretty adamant that you weren't going to uh, sign on with the site. And being the massive chip leader going into the final table, obviously you could have negotiated a pretty, pretty favorable deal. You didn't do that at all? No. And uh, no regrets about that? No, I not at it. all. Um, what was your thinking about that? I'm self-employed. I've been self-employed my whole life. And um, now I've got enough money I can live comfortable. Mm -hmm. Why do I need somebody to call me and tell me i got to be in Europe, i got to be in London? I got, you know, you know, are you used to be your own boss. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just don't want to be out in that lifestyle, mm -hmm. the whole, you know, 365 days a year. I just... I want to be able to pick and choose what I do. You've been very true to yourself, which I think yes. people appreciate and, and yeah. respect. The other thing is that you're wearing this New Orleans Saints hat way before they heated yes. up. Yeah. Now they won the Super Bowl, so it's a big year for you in all respects, but I respect the fact that you wore the Saints hat, they were still struggling, and uh, then they got on a roll and won the whole thing. I've worn New Orleans Saints hat for probably 20 years, religiously. I mean, it, even though you're not from the area, even no, though you're from uh, yeah, Western Maryland. Yeah, 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 it's. I mean, I've always rooted for the underdog. Back then, they were not the best team in the league. Right. Um, well, you were the, you were definitely the underdog last year, yeah. and huge accomplishment to uh, to make it heads up. And like you say, you played your game. And uh, all the way through, and it carried you to yeah. second place and yeah. almost six million dollars. So, yeah. it's the American 5 .2, dream. 5 .18. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. it's it good. Well, I appreciate you coming on. It's yeah. been very interesting. People are very curious because, uh, compared to a lot of poker players, obviously you're not exposed as much. You're not getting yeah. as many interviews. People are yeah. curious about you. But yeah. uh, as you present yourself, you are you are who you are. You are right. who people think yeah. you are. Um, I won't change that part. I mean, you know, my not, life has changed. You're not wearing the big jewelry, the big hip hop no, gangster no, type no, jewelry or anything. Um, you don't have a big entourage. No, if uh, my wife is here today, um, if I wore a lot of jewelry in my job, I would be hurt. I'm yeah, not, that wouldn't be I'm, wise I mean, when you're yeah, logging to right, have something it, around yeah. your neck. And it's just, you like, I mean, if you're going to wear it, you're going to wear it. If you're not, you're not. Um, they gave me a nice watch. What the, everybody made the final table. I've never had it out of the box. Right. I've never, I mean, it's, it's, it's more nice. The memories yeah. are more important yes, than anything yeah. else. Yeah, um, it's, it's been good. It's been a pleasure, Darwin. Thanks yeah. for joining us. Thanks for joining us on The Scoop, brought to you by Full Tilt Poker. Wrote to us at The Scoop at carplayer.com.